Hotel and Casino in Hollywood, Florida, plays host to Professional Fighters League action. This time, it is a World Championship Night. Your co-main event, Ray Cooper III, Magomed Magomed Karamov, and capping off the biggest night in mixed martial arts, Kayla Harrison and Taylor Gardado. Welcome everybody to the weigh-ins. Sean O'Connell, Randy Couture, Kenny Florian, getting you ready for the biggest night in mixed martial arts. Six world titles will be decided right here tomorrow night. Six $1 million prizes will be handed out. Oh, and we've got Clarissa Shields stepping into this smart cage for only the second bout of her professional mixed martial arts career. And on top of that, three PFL newcomers for season four will make their debuts to set the stage tomorrow night. It is a massive, massive evening. I cannot overstate how huge this is. In fact, a couple of our title contenders will be looking for back-to-back -back titles, including our main event, where Kayla Harrison looks for her second title in two seasons. She's a two-time Olympic judo gold medalist. She likes collecting things in pairs. Grab a couple of gold medals, She's got a couple of kids now looking for two championship belts. And Taylor Gardado looks to play the spoiler. Trying to pull off the biggest upset not only of her career, but the entire year in mixed martial arts. This is a fascinating matchup at 155 pounds, and it'll cap off the whole night. Kayla Harrison, Taylor Gardado, Randy, what do you expect in this bout? Well, it's been amazing watching the progression of Kayla Harrison. Met her four years ago before she'd ever stepped in a cage. Put her ego to the side. Here's a two-time gold medalist in judo Olympics. Could have walked away into the sunset, but said, no, this is what I want to do. She's added another layer of onion to that. She's become the title of mom. And she says that mother title has really focused her. It means more to her now going in that training environment, putting herself out there. She's way more focused now, and that makes her pretty formidable to anybody on the planet, in my opinion. Taylor Gordado obviously trains at my gym. I've seen her, she had an amazing amateur career, took four years off, started a family, has now come back to MMA, jumped right into the PFL. Huge step up in competition for her, and she has earned it every step of the way. She's just grinded it out, been very coachable, very diligent, put the work in, feels that she wants to prove that she deserves to be here. Taylor Gordado, Kayla Harrison in the main event tomorrow night. But goodness gracious, this title rematch, Ray Cooper III, season two welterweight champion, and the runner-up in season one, he wants revenge, and he wants to get it inside the smart cage tomorrow night. Why is it a revenge fight? Because the man who beat him is right there. Magomed Magomed Karimov took the championship belt and the $1 million away from Ray Cooper in season one. He's looking to even the score and establish who the real best welterweight in the PFL is in this bout. Kenny, I don't know how we can sell this fight properly. Two incredible fighters with a little bit of personal angst going into this one. What do you expect? Yeah, before the season even started, they had a lot of people giddy about this potential rematch, and we're getting it here in the championship tomorrow night. These are two guys that really just go out there and like to press the action. Both come from wrestling backgrounds. They could both get it done with their takedowns and control. But these are two different fighters than the very first time that they fought. Of course, 2018, Magomed Magomed Karamov being the champion. 2019, Ray Cooper being the champion. And Ray Cooper has shown that he is a different fighter in, in far as uh, how he's able to put it all together. He's just smarter. He's been able to pace himself a lot more. He's been able to control that aggression, but he still goes out there to try to knock your head off. And Magomed Karamov as well just looks even cleaner, looks crisper, looks very confident. We've seen him battle back from adversity with that knee injury in his first fight against Curtis Milner. This is a dream matchup right now. We'll talk about that fight a little bit more when we get these two weighing in. But those two title fights to cap off tonight, you would think that's enough. That's a great card by itself. But there's four more title fights to add to that. At heavyweight, it's Bruno Capeloza versus Ante Dilia. Dilia is the prize pupil of one legend, Mirko Krokop. How about this, Mavlid Haibulayev and Chris Wade at 145 pounds. Mavlid has learned a lot of his mixed martial arts skill from 
Habib Nurmagomedov. Kenny, you've heard of that guy, I'm sure. Antonio Carlos Jr. and Martin Hamlet, two great grapplers squaring off at light heavyweight. Does that make it a striking battle? We'll discuss that here coming up. And the week where Jabov was in the season two championship bout, he lost that in a hard fought contest to the best friend of his current opponent, Haush Manfio. Lots of storylines here, and there are the betting odds for those so inclined. Kayla Harrison, once again, a massive favorite in the main event. And Ray Cooper III finds himself an underdog, despite the fact that he won a championship back in 2019. Speaking of great fighters, Speaking of folks that will be inside this Smart Gates tonight, how about Clarissa Shields? We're handing out all those gold belts. She brought some gold of her own with her. She's got three boxing division world titles. She's got two Olympic boxing gold medals. Clarissa Shields in a showcase feature. It'll be three five minute rounds against Abigail Montez, who by the way, is also undefeated as a mixed martial artist. Clarissa Shields stepping into the smart cage for the second time. Abigail Montez is formidable, but we saw Clarissa Shields overcome some serious adversity in her mixed martial arts debut. Randy, what kind of growth are we looking for from the quote? I tell you what, we, we had a, our fighter interviews on Sunday with every fighter on this card, and she was the one that impressed me the most with her attitude, how she's been able to check her ego at the door, put herself in some uncomfortable situations in a lot of places she's not used to being with all the accolades that she's won. That's an impressive attitude to me. I expect to see her, her grappling challenged against Montez. Uh, obviously, I think anybody that faces her doesn't want to stand around in front of her and test her hands because she know we know she's got great hands. Yeah. So I think the smart move is to try and get her to the ground. Try and we saw Brittany Elkin do that. And boy, she was in the worst place she could be in in a fight as a boxer. And she maintained her composure and found a way to turn it around and found a way to win. That's impressive. We tell the story about Clarissa Shields, but this is a huge opportunity for Abigail Montez, who with a win here, announces herself on the World MMA stage. She does have some advantages heading into this fight. Number one, she's been training mixed martial arts her whole career. She's not coming from a boxing where she trained for years and now has to adjust her game plan uh, or her skill set here. She's been training it in all for a few years now. Um, she does have more experience as well, and all eyes are on Clarissa Shields. So she has a wonderful opportunity here to come in here as spoiler. Six title fights and a showcase bout featuring a two-time Olympic gold medalist. That's enough. That's, that's fine. That's more than anyone needs. But wait, wait, there's more. That's right. Showcase bouts, the first three bouts of the night, featuring some newcomers to the PFL. Amari Akhmedov comes in. He'll be a member of the light heavyweight roster heading into season four. He's a huge favorite over Jordan Young, the grappling expert. And at women's lightweight, Julia Budd has thrown her name into the mix. A former Bellator champion, also a favorite against Caitlin Young, who we've seen inside the Smart Cage this season. And then at lightweight, Don Madge, formidable striker out of South Africa, has signed on for season four. He'll take on Nathan Williams in his PFL debut. Let's talk about this light heavyweight edition. Omari Akhmedov has an impressive resume. He's got a skill set to go right along with it. What do you expect from him and Jordan Young? Well, it comes from the combat sambo background, another fighter from Russia, the, the Dagestan area that have produced so many great fighters, excellent wrestler, heavy-handed uh, fighter as well. These guys have actually trained together. Jordan Young, known for his submission skills. All right, let's talk about the women's lightweight edition. A lot of the question is, who can test Kayla Harrison? Well, you got to bring in people with championship pedigree. Julia Budd is a former Bellator world champion. Yeah, featherweight champion for Bellator, defended that title three times. She has 15 victories, three losses. I only mention those losses because those names, Nunez, Rousey. Cyborg. Cyborg. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> pretty ridiculous list of names there. And I think she has her hopes on maybe adding Kayla Harrison on the win side, not the loss side to that equation. Amazingly well-rounded fighter. I think being up at this weight class, she says she admires the PFL for starting a weight class at 155. Now she doesn't have to cut a lot of weight, but it takes one more thing off her plate as she focuses to go into a championship season. And 155 pounds on the men's side, Don Madge is a newcomer for season four. Out of South Africa, a guy with incredible striking, what do you think of the bout between him and Nathan Williams? Yeah, very talented fighter. Uh, of his nine wins, he has eight finishes, so he likes to go out there and be exciting. This should be a great fight between Williams, who also is a fantastic grappler. 
All right, well, without further ado, let's get these fighters weighed in and set the stage for tomorrow night. We will open the night at 155 pounds with the men. Don Madge making his PFL debut out of South Africa, and Nathan Williams also making his PFL debut has an opportunity to impress the bosses tomorrow night. And with that, we send it to Lillian Garcia. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the weigh-in show on the eve of the 2021 PFL World Championship. This is it. The fighters have been giving everything they have to get to this point. And it all starts tomorrow night, 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN+. And now, please welcome the president of Fighter Operations, Mr. Ray Seppo. In the blue corner, fighting out of Stone Mountain, Georgia, Nathan Williams. His official weight, 155 and one half pounds. In the red corner, fighting out of Cape Town, South Africa, Don Mack. His official weight, 155 and one half pounds. showcase bout Caitlin Young we've seen her inside the PFL smart cage here in season three and Julia Budd will be making her debut trying to set the expectations high for season four over to you Lillian in the blue corner fighting out of Shoreview Minnesota Caitlin Young Her official weight, 155 and one half pounds. In the red corner, fighting out of Fort Moody, British Columbia, Canada, Julia Budd. Her official weight, 154 and one half pounds. After that, at 205 pounds, a light heavyweight showcase bout. Jordan Young, who wished his season three had gone a little bit better, will welcome Omari Ahmedov, the Russian newcomer to the PFL Smart Cage. In the blue corner, fighting out of Coconut Creek, Florida, Jordan Young. His official weight, 206 pounds. In the red corner, fighting out of Dagestan, Russia, Omari Ahmedov. His official weight, 203 and one half pounds.
From there, we move to the title bouts. And here's one more look at our championship fight card. Kayla Harrison, the big time favorite. In fact, all the red corner getting some love, except in that co-main event, Magomed Magomed Karamov, the slight favorite over Ray Cooper III. We will start the championship belts being handed out at men's lightweight. 155 pound lightweight world championship, five five minute rounds. Tajikistan versus Brazil. Malik Rajabov versus Haush Manfio. Malik Rajabov, the lone representative on the PFL roster from his home country of Tajikistan. He's a huge combat sports star over there. He feels like a championship will really cement not only his place, but his country's place in the world mixed martial arts scene. And we've seen Lawik at a very high level here in the Professional Fighters League now for the second straight season. He lost the 2019 championship bout to Natan Schultz in a hard fought, very close affair. Yeah, we saw him be a little frivolous with his energy in that championship final. And we've seen this season a little more refined Lawik Rajabov. He does a better job of controlling positions, uses his wrestling very effective. He's got naturally heavy hands, and he will stand and try and strike with guys, but he definitely wants to take guys down, smother them, float on top of them, be very, very hard on them. And he's been able to pull that off all season long. He's looking forward to trying to do that again against Mampio in the finale. So as I said, Loic Rajabov lost his season two championship opportunity to Natan Schultz, who was a back-to-back -back season champion in one and two. And Natan Schultz happens to have a connection to this fight because he's beat Loic Rajabov and also he's Haush Manfio's best friend and the godfather of his children. That's how close these two Brazilians are. And now Haush Manfio is looking to do the same thing his best friend did and find a way to beat Loic Rajabov. How does he make it happen? Well, for him, he's not the fastest starter, whereas Rajabov is. So he's got to be very careful early on in this fight. But once Manfio starts to heat up, watch out. He creates so much momentum. He starts putting his combinations together. He gets his rhythm out there, and he will beat you up. Uh, this is a guy who loves to stand up and train. He also feels that if he does get taken down, he's got the submission skills to get it done there as well. He's coming into this fight very, very confident. He feels this is his destiny to become a PFL world champion. Over to you, Lillian Garcia. In the blue corner, fighting out of Porto Alegre, Brazil, here is the number three seed, Haush Manfiel. His official weight, 155 pounds. In the red corner, fighting out of Dujambe, Tushikistan. Here is the number one seed, Louis Rajava. His official weight, 155 pounds. From lightweight, we go to my favorite weight class here in the PFL. The light heavyweight world championship in season three will be contested between two excellent grapplers. The number one seed, Antonio Carlos Jr., very experienced. Martin Hamlet, the three seed, is a relative newcomer to the sport of mixed martial arts. This is only his 12th pro MMA bout. Let's talk about shoe face Antonio Carlos Jr. Grappling credentials like you read about. This guy can do it any way on the ground. Can he get and keep Martin Hamlet on the ground long enough to set up a submission? Well, th that's going to be the question. You know, 
for Antonio Carlos Jr., he's already a Jiu-Jitsu World Champion, now trying to be a mixed martial arts world champion here in the PFL. We've seen huge improvements in his takedown game, big improvements in his striking as well, and how he's putting it all together. It's all been working for him over at American Top Team, so he is coming into this very confident. He's so excited that he's fighting at 205 pounds. He feels he has the strength and the energy to go out there and perform the way he's always wanted. High-level jiu-jitsu from Antonio Carlos Jr. His opponent, Martin Hamlet, out of Norway, brings a Greco-Roman background into the cage. And Randy, Greco-Roman, you just can't be successful in MMA <laughs> with Greco-Roman skills. I don't know anybody who's done it. <laughs> <laughs> Martin Hamlet is an amazing athlete, seven-time national champion from Norway, brings the sport and the opportunity to legalize the sport in Norway with success in this outing. He's done a great job in the clinch. He's got amazing power. If he gets his hands on you, you're going to have a serious problem. You're probably going to get some frequent flyer mire. The amazing power. There's a triangle chunk on triangle from the guard. I've never seen anybody pull it off from there. This guy's very powerful. We did see him in later fights get a little frivolous and a little tired. I think we're going to see a little more refined and a little more directed Martin Hamlet in this fight. He's going to, he says he's, he's tuned that down a little bit. In the blue corner, fighting out of Tunker, Norway, here is your number three seed, Martin Hamlet. His official weight, 205 pounds. In the red corner, Fighting out of Joao Pessoa, Brazil. Here is your number one seed, Antonio Carlos Jr. His official weight, 204 and one half pounds. Movlin Haibulayev representing Dagestan, Russia. Chris Wade, Long Island, New York, a former lightweight who has come down for season three here in the PFL. Both of these individuals come in prepared. Great training camps for Chris Wade and for Movlin Haibulayev. Let's talk about the killer Movlin first. He comes from the Abdulmanap Nurmagomedov school. He calls Habib one of his best friends and training partners, and he's got a skill set that reflects that lineage. Yeah, that's right, and he fights with so much pride in representing that school. Of course, the late Abdulmanap Nurmagomedov is always on his mind, and this is a guy who looks like a mini Habib Nurmagomedov. He knows how to set up his striking, to set up his takedowns. He puts you on your back, and you're just not getting up. He's so good at controlling you and beating up with his ground and pound. And he also can set up submissions as well. He's an explosive striker. We've seen him drop guys, and you see that flying knockout right there, one of the fastest knockouts we've seen. Just a brilliant overall mixed martial arts fighter who is ready to be a world champion. Mavlid comes in with a lot of hype behind him, and that means his opponent, Chris Wade, is once again the underdog. But Wade is very comfortable in that role. In fact, in the semifinals, he was an underdog. And boy, did he prove that that was the wrong expectation. Chris Wade coming down from 155, and it's worked out nicely. Absolutely. I think we're seeing Chris Wade at the right weight class here. He's probably kicking himself like, why didn't I think of this before? <laughs> uh, if he had a knock, it was his ability to finish fights. He has a ton of decisions and some knockout and submission victories, but a lot of people say he didn't finish. Now we're seeing finishing ability of him. He's managed to keep his strength, keep his size, and his endurance at 145. He uses his wrestling very, very well. He's got heavy hands naturally, but he's not afraid to tactfully put you on the ground, smother you, and make you wrestle him any chance he can. He does that very, very well from his slip in New York. He's the pride of his slip and a state champion from there, and he wants to represent his hotel well. Lillian Garcia put these featherweights on the scale. 
Six million dollars are on the line tomorrow night, and the championship fights will continue on ESPN Plus, along with being simulcast on ESPN2, all at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And now, as we continue this weigh-in show, in the blue corner, fighting out of Islip, New York, he is the number two seed, Chris. His official weight, 145 pounds. In the red corner, fighting out of Dagestan, Russia, he is the number four seed, Mowgliad Abulaya. His official weight, 145 pounds. championship contention. The number one seed, Bruno Capaloza, taking on the pride of Croatia, Ante Dilia. Five five-minute rounds at heavyweight. This is a rematch. The first time these two individuals met up, Bruno Capaloza scored a first round knockout victory. And Randy, as you know, sometimes when you're the winner of the first bout, in a rematch situation, it's hard to make the necessary changes. But Bruno has blitzed everybody this season with yep. his power. Can he do it again? Well, I agree with you, Sean. It's sometimes hard on the guy that won the first fight, how he's going to make a change. And, it, and guess what changes that guy's going to make going into the second fight. Bruno thinks he's got it. I tell you what, he reminds me a lot of a young Vitor Belfort. If you stand around in front of this kid, he is going to explode. He said from day one, these guys in heavyweight are not going to be able to deal with my speed. He's come up from 205. And boy, has he lived up to that from the very first match we've seen him in. Very, very explosive. And punch combination after punch combination, right on the point, laser sighted. He is an amazing athlete. I'm excited about this fight. I'm not sure Ante's very excited about it, but I am. Well, Ante Dilia is the prize pupil of a legend, Mirko Krokop Filipovic. Krokop is an absolute legend in this sport, and now Ante wants to start his own legacy, and he's got to get past the guy who already knocked him out in the first round if he's going to start that path. How does he do it? Well, we learned a lot about Ante Delia uh, and how he's able to battle back from adversity, coming back from a first round uh, knockout loss. I mean, that can ruin a guy's uh, psychology, can ruin his confidence. And for Delia, we've seen him get better and stronger. And then in his last fight, beating Dennis Golsoff, one of the best heavyweights in the world, in my opinion, really showed what he was all about. He was able to win the rounds when he needed to. This is an excellent grappler, but he can strike as well. And I think we're going to see a different approach approach and the best Ante Delia we've ever seen. In the blue corner, fighting out of Zagreb, Croatia, here is the number three seed, Ante Delia. His official weight, 243 pounds. In the red corner, fighting out of Sao Paulo, Brazil, here is your number one seed, Bruno Capelluza. His official weight, 236 and one half pounds.
After that heavyweight belt is handed out, we will take a brief interlude from the title fights for a special event, showcase bout at women's lightweight between Clarissa Shields and Abigail Montez. The quote, the two-time Olympic boxing gold medalist, Clarissa Shields, 1-0 in her mixed martial arts career, Abigail Montez, 2-0 so far. Clarissa Shields overcame adversity the first time out. She was on her back for two and a half rounds in that fight. Still pulled out the third round knockout victory. We need to see growth from her in this second bout only a few months later. Randy, what's it going to look like? Well, I think we will see growth. It really depends on Abigail Montez and how she approaches Clarissa Shields. Is she going to test her out? Is she going to stand in front of her and try and test her hands out? Or is she going to do the smart thing and make that transition and try to put her on the ground? Clarissa has done a great job of with John, putting herself in some uncomfortable positions, putting herself right here where Brittany O can put her. Full mount, worst place you can be as a boxer is in the full mount position. She stayed composed, she showed amazing composure in my opinion, and found a way in the third round to turn it around and get where she needed to be, which was on top, landing heavy fists, heavy heavy hands, and those are the things we would expect from her. She's gonna, we'll see if, if Abigail can put her in some positions and see some new skills from Clarissa Shields. High expectations for Clarissa Shields because of her boxing pedigree, and so far so good in mixed martial arts. Well, the same is true of Abigail Montez. She has yet to taste defeat as a mixed martial artist. Every bout starts on the feet. And when you're standing across from a two-time Olympic boxing gold medalist, does that mean Abigail Montez just wants to get down wants to take this thing to the mat right away? Wouldn't be surprised to see that. She's been training uh, with a lot of high-level fighters, some of them Alexa Grasso, Arena Aldana, who fight in the UFC, uh, who have done very well over there. So she's gonna, she feels she's gonna be ready for the striking skills of Clarissa Shields if she needs to stay there. But yeah, Sean, I expect her to try to look for those takedowns, put Clarissa on her back early to try to test those grappling skills. In the blue corner, fighting out of Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, Abigail Montes. Her official weight, 154 and one half pounds. In the red corner, fighting out of Flint, Michigan, Clarissa Shields. Her official weight, 155 and three quarter pounds. championship that also happens to be a rematch of the season one 170 pound championship bout. Ray Cooper the third, the season two champ, Magomed Magomed Karimov, the season one champ, and Ray Cooper looking to make it back to back titles. But this is the fight that has meant the most to him. This is the fight that he's wanted ever since that loss in season one, Randy, and now it's here. I agree. I think Ray Cooper's having a dream season, if you will. We signed Rory McDonald. The first thing he says is, I want Rory McDonald. He got Rory McDonald in the semifinals. He has wanted this fight, and here he is against Jake Shields in season one. Heavy-handed, tremendous wrestler, scrambles very, very well, uses his wrestling skills. Here's his loss to Megamit Kiermaier with a guillotine choke. And he has wanted this rematch with Megamit Kiermaier for the last three years. He's been hungry for this, and he's getting exactly what he wants. We see a more refined Ray Cooper now. He was frivolous with his energy, and I think got a little tired in that championship fight in 2019. And we're seeing him refine that aggression a little bit, direct it a little more, stay a little more focused, and that is a tough guy to deal with. Well, Kenny, Ray Cooper the third. He, he won the season two championship, but he's gotten better since then, as Randy just mentioned. And now Magomed Magomed Karimov has to face, I think, an even better version of Ray Cooper. Does he get it done for the second time 
in as many bouts against the Hawaiian. I agree. He's definitely going to have to deal with a much better Ray Cooper. But I believe Magomed Karamov is better himself. He showed that he knows how to deal with adversity. Coming into this, he needed a first round win against Curtis Millender. Well, it, it wasn't so smooth for him. He got his knee injured in that fight. He found a way to get that Ezekiel choke right there, put him to sleep, and he has looked phenomenal since then. Uh, looking like he's firing in all cylinders. There he is dealing with that injury, winning that fight on one leg. Just unbelievable. Uh, but, you know, for him, he's got the submission game. He's got the striking. He's going to have the reach and length here in this fight. This is going to be an amazing fight, gentlemen. This is what everybody wanted, and he's coming into this fight very confident. He believes he's going to get another choke here against Ray Cooper. In the blue corner, fighting out of Dagestan, Russia, he is the number four seed and the 2018 PFL welterweight world champion, Magomed Magomed Karamov. His official weight, 170 pounds. In the red corner, fighting out of Pearl City, Hawaii, he is the number three seed and your 2019 PFL welterweight world champion, Prada Ray Cooper III. His official weight, 169 and three quarter pounds. An intense stare down ahead of what promises to be a very intense fight. If we take a look at our tail of the tape, Magomed Magomed Karamov, three years older. He's taller. He's got a reach advantage with the arms and the legs. And we've got him now for a question or two ahead of this championship rematch. There he is, Maga Millions. Maga, it has been almost three years since the first time you and Ray Cooper III squared off inside the PFL smart cage. What about this fight is going to be different than the first time you matched up? Магомед, вы с Рэйм уже столкнулись три года назад. Мы знаем, как бой закончился. Как вы думаете, чем бой в этом году, ваша новая встреча отличается от того, что случилось три года назад? Встреча ничем не отличается. Тот же самый боец, тот же самый клетка. И будет тот же самый результат. Uh, I don't see much difference in this fight. It's the same fighter, uh, same skills, and I see the same outcome. Maga, you did tell us during the fighter interviews that you expect another submission victory. Are you ready to guarantee that tonight? Магомед, в одном из интервью вы сказали, что вы готовы опять удушающий провести. Если возможность такая получится, вы думаете, так бой закончится? Я могу его стойки побить тоже, мне проблем не будет. Могу побороть, могу задушить тоже его. Ну, в бою увидите, что будет. I cannot tell you now exactly what's going to happen. We'll have to play it by ear. We might do a striking match. We can do some grappling, some wrestling. Again, we'll see how the fight unfolds. We'll we'll see the spectacular fight. Thank you, Maga. And with that, we go over to Brada Ray Cooper the third. Ray, this is a fight that you have wanted the, this rematch since that season one championship loss. Now it's here. How do you make sure the outcome is different this time? Um, I just can go in there and um, get into a fight. That's pretty much what it is. I'm going there and punch him in his face, plain and simple. That's a simple game plan. Brada, haircut looks good. Thank you, Ray Cooper the third. Thank you. All right. Look, we got to state this, all right? Ray Cooper III shaved the head right before his championship <laughs> bout, and I'm told that that might have had something to do with a pretty tough weight cut. How does that plan? Not only the weight cut, Randy, but also, you know, 
fight with a shaped head. I like the barber. <laughs> <laughs> the barber is that's a great idea. Wind resistance is at a minimum. Right <laughs> exactly, that's true. <laughs> Oh, a more uh, aerodynamic <laughs> for the third here in the season three championship. Well, uh, you know, it's funny. He, he looks even more intimidating now with the shaved yeah. head. So uh, not not that he needed to be more intimidating, but he looks very focused. And, you know, it, it, that could be a, that could be a telling thing. You know, um, we've seen it before. Guys who get involved in, in a lot of tough weight cuts that are in the heat for that long, they'll do anything to try to cut that weight. Uh, shaving the head, I, I don't know. Maybe that's a sign that that was a tough weight cut. Who knows? That's our co-main event, and up next, it is the main event of our championship evening. Women's Lightweight World Championship, five five-minute rounds. Kayla Harrison looking for back-to-back -back titles. Taylor Gardato trying to pull the upset of the year in the sport of mixed martial arts. Kayla Harrison, she's got two Olympic gold medals. Yep. She's looking for back-to-back -back world titles here in the PFL. She wants to be known as the best, best mixed martial artist on the planet, but you got to get it done. And for her, the expectations are even higher. A lot of times people say you got to do it perfectly. What do you expect from Kayla? Well, to say I have a respect and admiration for Kayla and what she's accomplished in the three years that I've known her would, would, would be an understatement. She's just done such a great job of checking that eagle, putting herself out there, putting herself in a great camp, being willing to stop being so hard on herself. Doesn't need to be perfect, just needs to be effective and get the job done. And man, have we seen her on fire this season. She has been amazing to watch. The ground and pound, the submission skills, the takedown skills from top to bottom. She's just done an amazing job. And the new title has brought a new focus to her. Being called mom now has, I think, put a new focus on her training and her, and her accomplishments. Kayla Harrison decorated in every combat sport, and her opponent, Taylor Gardato, comes in as a massive underdog. But, Kenny, we all know one of the best ways to become a legend is to beat a legend. Taylor Gardato, with an upset here, could really make a name for herself. No question about it. And she has no pressure going into that fight tomorrow night. Uh, and she has come in here as an underdog. Her first fight, she was underdog. Her second fight, her third fight, and she has been undefeated. Uh, and she has shown that she knows how to learn from each and every round. She has gotten better. She knows how to win rounds. She's a smart fighter that knows how to utilize her grappling and her control to get it done. Uh, I imagine she's going to try to stand up with Kayla as well. Four ounce gloves. Anything can happen. We've seen upsets here before. In the blue corner, fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, here is your number four seed, Taylor Gardano. Her official weight, 154 and one half pounds. In the red corner, fighting out of Middletown, Ohio, here is your number two seed and the 2019 PFL Women's Lightweight World Champion, Kayla Harrison. Her official weight, 153 and three quarter pounds. We'll take a look at our tail of the tape for this women's lightweight main event. Kayla Harrison, one year older, two inches taller. It's Taylor Gardano with the reach advantage on the arms. Slight advantage to Kayla Harrison in the leg reach. Taylor Gardano came into this season, as Kenny just mentioned, uh, being forced to embrace the underdog role. And once again, you have to do that in a championship bout. What is your mindset coming in knowing that nobody expects you to win this fight? I'm extremely calm. Um, I'm ready. You know what? I'm, I'm just, I'm going to have a great time and uh, I'm going to go out there and just do what I love to do. 3-0 and in her first PFL season, looking to go 4-0 and tomorrow night. Taylor Gardato. And with that, we go over to the returning champion, Kayla Harrison, I'm told that you uh, you like things that come in pairs. Two Olympic gold medals, officially now mom of two kids. Two kids. 
How do you make it two championship PFL belts? How? How? I go out there and do what I do best, kill for the love of killing. Like like a lion, maybe? <laughs> Some sort lion, of... Lion, tiger, bear, wolf. <laughs> I don't give a shit. Whatever it is, I'm going to kill. That is your women's lightweight main event. The last of six championship bouts on our card tomorrow night. Kill for the love of killing, Randy. <laughs> Pretty simple. <laughs> you have a way of getting her upset sometimes, <laughs> I feel like. Your questions are perfect for She her. scares me. <laughs> <laughs> she scares me, too. <laughs> All right, so we set the table for you with six title bouts. Oh, by the way, Wiz Khalifa is going to be performing live. That's right. The biggest night in mixed martial arts gets even bigger, I'm told. Uh, Wiz did not allow Kenny Florian to take on the role of backup dancer. Oh, come on! Oh. Come on! I had such a good routine. Oh. I know, you showed me that sequin banana hammock you were going to I was ready! Me. Man, I can't <laughs> believe that. Randy, and all seriousness. you wouldn't allow that. Uh, Wiz is, is not just an sure. MMA fan, he's not just an investor here in the PFL. This is a guy who actually practices the yes. mixed martial arts. You've sparred with him. I have Wiz. sparred with him. He is actually very, very good. He came into us at Unbreakable, wanted to put on some weight because he felt like it was too skinny. How that's possible, I don't know. But, <laughs> uh, and just has done a great job in, in three or four years putting on 20 pounds of mass. And his kickboxing is on point. He is very good. Wiz Khalifa, man of many talents. So we've got a Wiz performance. We've got six title fights. We've got three PFL newcomers making their debuts in the showcase. We've got Clarissa Shields, the quote, a two-time Olympic boxing medalist in her second pro mixed martial arts bout. It does not get any bigger than this. It is the grandest night in the sport of mixed martial arts, and it is less than 24 hours away. 4.30 Eastern on ESPN Plus, 8 o'clock Eastern on ESPN 2 and ESPN Plus. Six title fights. Kenny Florian's going to be there. Randy Couture's going to be there. I'm Sean O'Connell. I will be there. Join us tomorrow night. We just lost viewers. We just lost viewers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna rehearse. Uh,